street car. <laughs> $3,000 carburetor who's doused it with fucking... Well, if it was a thousand, it still doesn't matter. It's a, if it's a $5 fucking carburetor, you don't want to put Loctite down the freaking venturies, you jackalope. What are you thinking? You put that on the threads, you don't fill the fucking... I did, I put it on the fucking threads. It's like you and silicone and just anything you touch, it just fucking goes through. I just didn't want my carburetor stud to back out. <laughs> How do you feel about the throttle blades? Mine are fucking saws off. And he's a whole different breed when he's chewing gum. Anytime you put a brand new carburetor on, I don't care what kind of carburetor it is, I don't care how good it is, I don't care how much you paid for it. You never start the car up and run the engine with a carb hat on, especially, you know, like a blow proof or a blow through application. You need to be able to look down those venturies and see if the boosters are dribbling. Because if those boosters are dribbling, if you've got a, a float sticking or something like that, you can flood the engine with alcohol wash the rings out, make a big mess. So we're gonna start it up and let it run without the carb hat on it first. Make sure we don't have any problems. Get some starting fluid. Shot scrapper. Ready? Yeah. All right. I've ever taken a carburetor out of the box, bolted on there, had it fire up, and Dude, absolutely. The idle was right where it was with the other carburetor. Yeah, I mean, it even idled right where it should. It was like 5 0 with the lean out open. Really? Yeah, right where it used to be. Go ahead and Tommy open that garage door. Let the see.
eventually. Hold it outside. Open the lean out, let it warm up. What what's the temperature, Billy? About 170? Yeah, it's about 170, 165. Alright, so 170. Shut the lean out and it was idling a little bit rich. And I ended up turning all four idle screws in all the way and then back them out a half a turn. They were out of turn and a half. So in doing that, we've got the idle air fuel ratio where we want it, which on our Behringer gauge is about 5.0. But it's got just a slight bit of stumble when you tromp it, which tells me that the jetting may be a little bit lean. And then also when he puts it on the deck and puts it on the two-step, it's popping out the exhaust a little bit and it's showing lean on the air fuel. So most likely what we'll need to do is jet the carburetor up a little bit all the way around. seem fine when you're driving around on the primaries they seem just right maybe just a scotch on the lean side because when you put it on the deck it wants to bog a little bit so I've jetted the front up from 188 to 200 and jetted the back from 188 to 230 and then I bumped the idle screws out a quarter of a turn or, or half a turn on each one and now it comes up on the two-step nice it doesn't bog uh, I haven't made a pull on it yet but my biggest concern is on the passenger side, primary throttle shaft, when he puts it on the deck, it puts it on the two-step, it's spitting fuel out around that throttle shaft in the boost plate. No problem. Yep, no problem. Thanks, John. He wants us to square jet at 230s all the way around, but I'm afraid that it's going to make it so rich. Primaries, it's just going to be a bastard. And he's one of the fucking guys that takes his shit and shoves it around with a golf cart. He don't drive through the pits. You know what I mean? Six would need that much fuel on my At least we know. tiny holes it only moves so much air when you move that much more air you have to move that much more fuel it's a lot you mean the venturies are small yeah the venturies are so small on the 750 
you don't have to run nearly as much jet on that thing with a 1,050 main body. That's why I was worried about doing a dominator. We'll get it. It's just going to have to have the metering blocks and the power valve channel restrictors changed in it to flow the additional fuel because with the amount of jet that it's got in the front, a 200 thousandths jet in the front, you're getting to the point where even on the primary it's going to get to the point where it wants to flood the engine trying to just do a, a, a burnout. So we can't throw any more main jet out at the front. Really. I mean, even if we threw a 230 jet in the front, that's still not going to get us where we need to be on the air fuel. No, I mean, we got to come down all three, three numbers to even be in the ballpark. And going from a, you know, 180 to 230, that only got us half a number. So at least he takes care of us, you know, at least he answers the phone. Oh, yeah. It's hopeful. It's no big deal. We'll ship it back, put the old 750 back on it for now, and we'll try it again when it comes back. At least it's plumbed, and literally all we need to do is throw a couple of plugs back in the, in the fuel lines and throw the 750 back on. Thirty-four to one hundred and thirty-seven into a headwind. <laughs> it was chatter in the tires. Yeah, it was. I could hear the. I was afraid it was going to lose the tire. It was so bad, but they held on. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what the GoPro shows on that wing. Been a five-team pass at one hundred forty. Right off the trailer. Now, if, that, if we were pouring our own puddle today and doing a burnout, you know, like we normally do on a Mickey, I'm telling you, 120, 60 foot, 140 on the back of the mouth. I'm happy. If 
far as I'm concerned, we can load that fucker back up. Yeah, I see it. 